the Koi Gig Pod on Off the Ball in association with Cadbury, official snack partner of the Republic of Ireland women's national team. Katie McCabe, a huge, huge goal. I'm very proud of the team's performance. We're going to go out there to beat them. We're going to try and beat them. Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Koi Gig Podcast. Kathleen McNamee here and I am joined as ever by P-Mount's very own and returning Karen Duggan and of course former Ireland and Arsenal player Emma Byrne. Guys, the WSL is back. We had lots of excitement. We had some hat tricks. We had Lauren James going at the Manchester United fans. Manchester United fans going back at her. Them also going at Skinner. Lots of excitement across the board. Um, but before we get into that, last week we obviously were discussing our uh, New Year's resolutions and our fitness. And Karen, you had one of your first fitness tests of the year. And Emma, I saw you kept to your uh, thing of going to the gym. I saw it on your Instagram. So Karen, we'll start with you. How are the legs feeling? We were joking that you're in the sauna at the moment trying to lose weight with your background. For anyone who's not listening in podcast, Karen looks like she's in a wooden cabin or of some sort. Um, but yeah, how are you feeling? I'm gone into hiding after it. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was fine. It was day one. They took it easy on us. We just did one of those uh, classic one kilometer tests. So I can still run for four minutes. So look, it's a start. It's a start. <laughs> for those uh, non-sporting people amongst us, is that just like running continuously or is it like the boots yeah. where you have to... No, no, no. Just straight stuff. run. Just get there as quick as you can. That's it. Just go, go, go. Oh, it's not too bad. When you were building it up, I thought it was going to be a lot worse. No, mentally, this is something that really gets to me. These The thoughts of those four minutes is killer. That, that just brings bad. me right back yeah. to when we had to do a 12-minute run. Ours were 12 minutes. You I know? remember doing the 12-minute run around the AUL when we were like under 50 in Ireland. Just, and you'd be after lunch and you'd have had about four plates of tricolor pasta with tomato sauce. And then they'd be like, come on, we're doing 12-minute run. And then a 90 minute game. You're like, oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Twelve. They love the 12 minute run. Yeah. But we were supposed to keep to, to a counter. So there were certain mm-hmm. points um, around the circle that you had to hit at a certain time. And you weren't supposed to go ahead of it. And you weren't, you were supposed to get there on time, basically. And um, of course, I am like, I love rules. So every time <laughs> I was like hitting the marker perfectly. Everybody was bombing, <laughs> bombing on. And I was like trotting around, beep, so happy with myself. Um, at least I think that that's what I was supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably a buzzer I, to say, give up. You haven't, you haven't made it. Yeah, maybe I'm, I was supposed to do it as fast as I could. I don't know. I wasn't the slowest person though. And as a goalkeeper, I actually was a bit competitive with this because, you know, goalkeepers have a reputation of being, uh, well, People who aren't goalkeepers think that goalkeepers are a little bit lazy. They're not quick. They're usually the slowest. That's why they're put in goal. This is not true. I'll have you know. Not true. Just put it out there. And I made I made sure everybody felt that in preseason. <laughs> <laughs> that was my motivation. <laughs> yeah, fitness tests are funny though as well because like I don't know if I'm as fit as I showed, but I'm very pig headed and I don't like to be beaten. So I think that that's the worst. That me the up. worst is the um uh the bleep test because yeah. you're like literally you think you're gonna cough up a lung and then <laughs> you're like that's it I'm out and literally five seconds later you're like I can go back in can I go back in <laughs> yeah, I know. it just gets to a point where you can't breathe but like you all you need is like a minute two minutes and then you can go back in I think the bleep test kind of been done away with now has it I haven't heard of too many people doing a beat test in a long time I really hope so because it is so destroying it's I think it used to have a a slightly bad name as in like it wasn't called the bleep test it was called something else and then as a and also like they used to do a lot in schools like we used to do it mm. in school but they would literally do it to the point where like girls were getting sick like they just weren't fit enough to do that sort of test they could have like changed it so I think they kind of banned it for like younger levels or like it was seen as not appropriate for younger levels and maybe that has gone through the upper stages as well that's why we're all soft now these days I would love (laughs) to know what psychotic teacher would do a bleep test in PE yeah 
Like we used to do them. used to go around like playing badminton and yeah. dodgeball. Yeah. We used to do them all the time. And we had a teacher that if you didn't get to a certain point in the bleep test, she then made you like sit and do like press ups or like sit ups or whatever. So like you were kind of running and in your head trying to calculate, okay, if I drop out now, which is actually going to be worse. Like maybe if she's not looking, I can kind of lie on the ground for a second and then like start doing the pull ups again. Yeah, it wasn't a wasn't a fun time. Especially for me, who is not a sporting inclined in any way. <laughs> like I would be more likely to, rather than drop out, I'd be the person who would just like fall over their own feet and then miss the beep because of that rather than anything else. Um, but you both have now given me a great idea for a segment since you both admitted that you're incredibly stubborn and pig-headed, which I did know already to like pit you against each other sometime and see how well that goes. So I think uh, all our listeners would very much be entertained by that. So if that, that is will be the end will... of the podcast as we know it. <laughs> <laughs> and a decade of friendship down the drain. I mean, I... it's just it's just impossible. It can't happen for me. Maybe for Karen it can happen, but... No, 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 no. They just I mean you'd have to I'd have to get three operations before that and then the recovery after that would be just like Karen will be retired by then. So you have to think about her. Like yeah. give, her, give her a break. Give her a break. <laughs> I have to save the last few miles that are left in my legs. <laughs> oh, we can wait until you're retired, Karen. Don't you worry. This is a this is a long third thing. I can make the exercise is good for however geriatric you were feeling at the time <laughs> it'll be oh, i tell you what would be good though if we could nominate someone to do it if you could nominate someone to do the bleep test and we were in a competition who would you nominate obviously Anya O'Gorman <laughs> oh Anya yeah she, <laughs> she just doesn't stop you think she? we're stubborn good gosh yeah, but you know what? Yeah, she struggled towards the end. I can just picture on you now, like just really trying to get to that. <laughs> We've done, I've done bleep tests with Anya. Yeah, she was one of the last ones standing, to be fair. Well, who would you pick? Yeah, I, I don't know. I asked the question and I've, I have no idea. Okay, I would have, have if I could bring Jane Ludlow back from. Surely you'd want like a, a Heather Payne or something in the mix there. And the Heather does some running. Heather does some running. What was it? Fifteen k <laughs> in the in the warm up or something. Like <laughs> okay, I'll take Heather. I'll take Heather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like we may need to change that match up a little bit. But hey, if you want to bring a team of people together, I wasn't actually going to force you into the bleep test either. I was going to like find something that's a little bit more kind because I'm not that cruel a master of the podcast that I would make you guys do the bleep test. Um, we have Emma Carroll back on the podcast this week to do a team of the week and we will be looking at some WSL action. But before that, we have had some listener questions in, and some of them we'll get to a little bit later on because they're more WSL focused. But AF slash Manu Defender wants to know, Karen, how you are feeling about the signings of your new Bulls duo teammates. Yeah, it's great. I mean, um, we're looking to bolster the squad because, you know, we're going to have more games this year. The All Island League is scattered in amongst the league, um, and as well, we have Champions League to look for. And yeah, there's been a lot of movement again in the league. So delighted to have the new girls on board. Um, long preseason ahead, everyone will be fighting for spots, and I guess that's only a good thing. So, um, yeah, I mean, we we're very happy with the squad that we had last year as well. We've managed to keep um almost everyone from that. So we can't we can't ask for much more than than what we have. Um, again, people spoke about us being underdogs last year for a reason because we didn't have the same resources and uh, to offer as certain other clubs. And if anything, it's harder again this year because more clubs are, are offering more money and um, accommodation and things like that stuff that we just don't have. So we're excited about the squad that we do have. We're going to do our best with that squad. Um, and that's all we can do. Again, I, I'm not going to start talking about winning leagues and stuff like that just because it's it's so hard to know where you are in comparison to other teams until you get into it. So, but yes, very happy to have signed um, Kira. And well, if we're starting at the, okay. the bar, we're starting at is you can run for four minutes. So for, we'll build up to minutes. you possibly winning the league as we go <laughs> yeah. over the course of the season. Maybe. Um, yeah, exactly. Baby steps. Well, yeah. I mean, you're both already doing better than I am when it comes to I haven't stuck to my walking oh well no actually I did a bit of walking last week when I was home in Saigo but 
Well, see, that's the thing. Like, I love it when I'm home in Sligo because I get to walk on the beach and it's just like, you know, you have, it's a nice, like, tight 2K. You do, like, you're fast walking. I'm like, was it Rob Heffernan? Whenever he does, like, the race walking. that That's how I look whenever I do it. Um, But yeah, enough of me that's whittling on. It's been a... That's how I look when I'm crossing the road. You know, I pretend to run if somebody lets me go. I'm yeah, like, or if someone is holding a door open for you. Oh, worse. This, this, is some, this is one of my things. Like, I refuse to hold doors anymore because it really bugs me when someone holds yeah. <laughs> Because you have to do that silly pretend run. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I never know what the good thing is. Like, do you acknowledge that the person is behind you and you know there's a distance? Or does it just look really, like, insincere if you give them, like, a quick smile and they close the door in their face? Or do you just, like storm on through like you haven't seen them and storm 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 trooper well, I, I give them the little option of of running but I swing the door out a little bit for them like <laughs> I'm helping them a little bit so I go past the door and I'll open it wider than I normally have to <laughs> them if they want to run slash walk towards it I feel like if there's any uh, I don't know, analysts that listen to this podcast who want to tell us what it tells about our three separate personalities that we've three different approaches to this. Uh, we would very much like to hear at the Koi Gig Pod on Twitter. <laughs> um, but yeah, before we go too deep into door discourse, because sadly that's not what people have come to us to listen to, <laughs> we shall have Emma Carroll up next, as I said before, and then we will have some WSL analysis for you all. Yes, so we are joined this week by Emma Carroll for her first WSL team of the 2024, I was about to say season, 2024 year. Keep doing that. Um, Emma, how are things? Good. To be honest, I was just enjoying the door chat, so I don't think anybody <laughs> really wants to hear the team of the week. I mean, we, we, do. we could revisit that at some stage, but uh, it was actually quite a good weekend of football and there was a lot of really interesting performances. So I'm going to let you take it away with your team of the week. So I went for Van Dumsler in goal. It was a weekend where I kind of contemplated maybe not putting any defenders in, but I went with <laughs> Mailing, Mubamai and Alexandria at the back and then Cuthbert, Valdi, Canarad, Coombs and Clinton. Kind of a five-ish and the two hat-trick uh, geniuses that's Bunny Shaw and Lauren James because they just can't score, stop scoring hat tricks. Yeah, imagine, shout out to Bunny Shaw, third hat trick of the year, and Lauren James has scored the most in the bridge. Imagine those two playing together though. Uh, you, no, <laughs> it's over before it started <laughs> playing together. That is that is dangerous. Yeah. Grace Clinton was so Would you actually have the two of them in the same team? Like would they be able to yes. play together? Yes. <laughs> Lauren James just off Bunny Shaw? Oh yeah. 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 Doesn't matter. <laughs> they're, when they're that the good. Gonna is, stick yes. to them no matter what you do. And then oh you, your whole tactic has to be can you find their feet and then if you want to join, join. <laughs> I wouldn't bother. I'd be sitting back in the centre circle. Like, like <laughs> <laughs> no, they're yeah, they're kind of breaking away from the pack in terms of being head and shoulders uh, this season. Just the standout players, I think the two of them. Yeah, I mean they're they're top goal scorers, aren't they? And then you've got um, Terra Slan for Brighton. She's <laughs> keeping them. Yeah, she's afloat. <laughs> <laughs> She she is uh, yeah she's doing brilliant for them isn't she I can't believe she's up there to be honest considering the performances of Brighton but um she's quality they'd be very 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 lucky to keep her this summer very. <laughs> her contracts <laughs> up like it's be thrown ever than at her please 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 stay um but she's quality Grace Clinton was she's going to be some player isn't she yeah if if you were in the Man United kind of back room now, would you be kind of like, do we, can we get her yeah. back? Would let's you take her, her back straight let's away? Her back. Let's just, yeah, let's cook, let's rip up the contract and take her back. She's so good. She's so good, but it's so good for these players to go out and get these, these minutes under their belt. The same happened um, last year with Jess Park and, you know, maybe she'll think about doing that again, to be honest, because as soon as you go back to the parent club and you're not getting minutes I can't imagine how that must feel like you. You've done so well. You're in the limelight. You're getting selected for England squads and then you go back to your to your main club and you're not getting the minutes. That must be very frustrating. 
Um, but yeah, Van Donsler's class, I think she's such a good keeper. She, um, do you know what? She still has loads of room for improvement. So I think she's depending on, you know, the right coaches and the right environment. I think she's going to be top, top drawer. But yeah, I wouldn't disagree with many of them, to be quite honest, Emma. Very yeah. good team. So Very a good, good start to the year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was kind of like um, good to see Valti in there because, you know, there was so much chat around her future at the at Arsenal. Um, that was good that that hasn't affected her or maybe it spurred her on even more. But yeah, she was, she was excellent in the middle. She's quality. Yeah. Emma Carroll, you said. She's a great holding player. Sorry, Emma, you go ahead. Yeah, I just think she's a great holding player and they're very hard to come by. And actually, I, I wonder how important she is or how they feel about her because I think she's one of Arsenal's most important players. And I'm not sure how much of an emphasis that is, but um, they, they need to keep her, I think. I think they need to keep hold of her. But we still have a week left and I have a feeling there's going to be more movements in this week. Do you? Go on, go viral again. Where? Go on. <laughs> Mr. Gavin's coming out. Come on. Um, it's a very general, it's a very general comment. <laughs> I think there's going to be more movement. There will be movement. <laughs> in the next week and that is it. Literally, that is all I think. Come on, who's, who's running up to the door? Transfer door. Come on. <laughs> that is it that is it. <laughs> that's all I'm saying um, I'm, I'm saying Carol, there's another you... week there's another week Is I mean I'm not wrong there am I <laughs> no you're not wrong no yeah we've I mean, got a week yet <laughs> you are correct and also I think it's a general trend that you do tend to see a few more things happening in the last week so you're not wrong in what you said but if you want to drop some names either and just speculate a little bit more like we, no we won't comment way. anything on it not Who do you time. think is most in need of a signing? Um, well, depends on what end of the scale you're looking at. If you're looking at the higher end, um, I would say Man United. But they're out, well, let's say it, they're out of the run and really now, so are they? You're yeah, you're, 10 points. you're ruling them out? I think so. Um I will, United up there in the top four, like they they need to to mm. hang on to those three in front of them. They need a sign, a couple of signings. I think personally, I don't think Arsenal need any more. I don't think uh, City need any more. Chelsea, I think they're fine, but unfortunately, you can't rely on you can't rely on Lauren James because she's she needs to find that that consistency level does she and when she finds that that's it that's all you need that's, you just need <laughs> just, just um but i actually do think they need a, another player whether it's a number 10 look a top top player whether it's a number 10 or an out and out nine uh, they i do think they need another player but i'm not sure we're going to see any anyone go in there and at the bottom end i mean obviously obviously it's bristol isn't it i mean just looking at that game of the week. Probably unlikely that they'll get signings. If they want to stay up, though, they need it. Yeah. I mean, that's a big pretty, ask. No, that's an yeah. obvious comment. So. Well, on the Chelsea point, I mean, Emma Hayes is kind of well known for getting a lot of her business done early and it being announced early. So I think you're probably right in that I'd be surprised to see anyone coming along unless she has something up her sleeve or something has been delayed contractually wise. Um, what about West Ham? They're also down the bottom, tied with. I Bristol think they made the moment, good points. signings. Made great signings. Yeah. I think mm. Gary is going to be huge for them. Like every yeah. time she got on the ball, she was so proactive with it in the game. So I think that they will be fine, but. Um, they do need to tighten up the back, obviously. Um, they're conceding four. But um, I think they've done good business, to be fair to them. It was needed, but I think, yeah, they made yeah, moves, which is good to see. They're, they're, they, they've made huge, huge signings. Mm -hmm. like, I think actually these results have been poor for them. I know it's very difficult to get team to jail straight away, but if you bring in, I mean, she's got, Rianne Skinner's got a team of internationals now. And, and what Karen said, the back line actually looks like is what they should have been improving on because they do leak goals, but they've got players that can go in and score as well. So uh, I don't think 
they're I don't think they're going to be in the bottom. I don't think they'll have anything to worry about a couple of games in. They'll collect points with that team, 100%. And just looking at them, how they play and everything, like I know they concede silly goals, but that's all, that can be fixed in two weeks. Yeah. Um, and they're going to score goals. And just looking at the teams around them, that they, they look like a better team than, mm. than Brighton, than Bristol. They look like a better team than Villa at the moment. Mm-hmm. And I would say them and Everton are, are on par at the minute. Mm, that's a big call, an interesting one. Well, you shall see how it unfolds over the rest of the season. Uh, Emma Carroll, any final points you would like to make on your team before you depart? Uh, no, it was great to see Miedema back for a good stint in the team as well. I thought she looked actually really good for probably her first 70 minutes. Is that the longest she's played so far? But maybe really good. And Hannah Hampton was decent as well. Go for Chelsea. Oh, yeah. Worth an honourable mention. I love the little clip that went viral of her where she got away with, I think she put a ball out, but the referee gave her a kick Definitely out got a fingertip just, to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's like the smile on her face being pure, like, hee hee, got away with that one. Uh, Emma, thank you very much for joining us, as always. Uh, we Cheers. look forward to many more Teams of the Weeks in 2024. Thank you. And we are back with some WSL analysis. So I feel like... We have to start with Chelsea versus Manchester United, even though it may make Karen very sad. Um, Karen, initial thoughts on this matchup. Uh, I mean, we can talk about Lauren James's brilliance, but I suppose we also have to talk about United and how they couldn't deal with it. Um, yeah, I think it was a result I expected based on how United have been playing. Um, and it's frustrating because they started playing when they were 2-0 down and you're just kind of like, why Why is it taking something like that? Um, is there still that thing that they're, I don't know, intimidated by the teams that are ahead of them, by Chelsea's success and, and stuff like that? And it, it looked a bit like it. Um, and they just can see, they don't make teams work as hard as Chelsea or Arsenal do to, to score goals um, or City, which... Um, is a pity. They did grow into the game. You know, there's definitely some positives to take. I think that, um, obviously we can talk about it in a bit. Uh, Skinner felt very hard done by by uh, one of the penalty appeals. Um, well, there was two penalty appeals. I think one was uh, possibly uh, more uh, to be considered to Galton's one. Um, but looking at Chelsea. Surely you say someone go out in the first few minutes and and maybe try and get in Lauren James's head, leave a mark on her if you can in some way. Like That's someone nice has way. That's a nice way of saying someone, <laughs> someone has to show her special attention. Um I think we saw Arsenal do that against Chelsea. I think that they kept her farther away from goal and um, you know, they were just at her, at her, at her, and she was quiet and she reacted and she was she was kind of lashing out and things like that. And Man United didn't have well, maybe no one was assigned to do it, but someone maybe should have taken that on themselves because she scored a hat trick and she's she's that player that can do that. So you have to pay attention to that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Totally agree. And I agree. Like she's such a she's such a good player. Like, how do you deal with her? Well, first of all, you hope she's not on form because that can happen quite a lot. And and secondly, if she is, you can tell in the first ten minutes or her first couple of touches what it's going to be like for her. And if she is on form, then it's like what you say, Karen. You have to get in, get in and around her. You have to be like annoying her mm-hmm. and just win, like chasing back and winning the ball off her. But um. I would have to say about the United defenders. Yeah. They're like, soft. Is there softness to them? going on there? They used to be so resilient. Like they yeah. were so good. Such a good connection. And I know Ona Batia held it together. Which is, yeah. It's a huge player. Yeah. I don't know if you were what Did any of you see the, the Barca Levante game? I just I saw, saw her being it. revered on Twitter. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god! Like ridiculous. She's ridiculous. She's she's unbelievable. But anyway, big loss. But they were all. I mean, Riviere is not bad, but I think it's just the dynamic in the backs. There's an uncertainty to them. It's like they've lost a little bit of. She, like you say that. Bad, but for a lot of the time, the 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 shape of the back line was all over the place, which I I don't really get at this level. And you know, against Chelsea, no, because you have to keep it tight. 
you cannot you cannot be so Riviera was higher up the pitch when the ball came in for I can't remember what goal it was but when the ball was flicked on to Lauren James like where was Riviera she was higher up she should be tucking round and if she's not going to tuck round which sometimes happens the message has got to come from behind for Letizia to cover Lauren James I mean as you said that's the player that is the player on the pitch that you need to worry about so you need to make sure you're defending her and I was I just was looking at it thinking th- th- these are all over the place they the last season whatever about you know we talked about scoring goals we talked about their midfield this season we're talking about individual players and not performing the back line also has to be you know talked about because they're not playing well they are leaking goals that they shouldn't be leaking. So, you know, things that can be fixed as well. But um, I'm not sure they're going to be fixed this season because there just seems to be some stuff going on there with United. Um, and, and they just don't look like a team that should be up there. They 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 should be fighting for Champions League. They're not. They don't look like they're going to fight for that either. So, uh, yeah, it's just about next season now and what Mark Skinner's going to do for next season. Does it feel like that? United this season have kind of lost their like star quality or like their little spark that they had. You know, obviously Baggi is gone, Essie Arusso is gone. It's not necessarily that it's affected Mary Earps' play, but like obviously there's been a lot of talk outside of like her actual performances for United in terms of transfers and how successful she's been just in general. And then you look at the rest of the team, like Ella Toom probably hasn't had her best season that she's had in a while. And then in terms of like, big names that you're like getting excited about there isn't really any of those players on United squad compared to like your Chelsea City Arsenal's no no yeah. there aren't I mean I think I I heard on the radio 20 something players went out of United like they released so many players um, and they haven't brought in players that are going to replace you know like we talk about uh, Russo quality player um, for me, not world class, but very, very good. She's a top class player who affects other players around her. So we, I'm saying individuals haven't performed, but actually those individuals are probably suffering because Russo's not up there as that number nine. Toon played off Russo. They played really, really well together. That's going to affect Toon's movement and her performance a little bit. She's going to have to find another way to play without Russo. And then you're talking about Ona Batia, who made everybody better because everyone was so worried about her going up the line. It meant the two midfielders, whether it's Hayley Ladd, Zellum, whatever, they have more space because the midfielders are getting dragged out to cover Ona Batia. And not only that, once the once she's on the pitch, the opposite side of the pitch is going to have way more space. So you're talking about Galton having more space. And that's what United did last season. When the, the ball broke, when they were in possession and they lost possession and won it back. So the second cycle, they were so good in that, in the second counter where they had Galton free or... Oh, yeah, no. I think that's a really good point because all season I've been like, why isn't Galton having the same effect as she had last year? And it was because they had Baggi, like wearing down the right-hand side until such a time that they could switch it and free up Galton. And then she was really potent last season and obviously had Russo to work with as well for her crosses. So um, it's amazing that the knock-on effect that losing a right back and have because a lot of people would think oh it's not the biggest catastrophe in the world people talked about Russo more but yes it is uh, certainly no, and, telling and the this more, year the more you you watch Batia playing in, in La Liga or La Liga F you realise what a player she is like I know it's for me it's a it's a lesser of standard I think the WSL is a higher standard and more physical but just little like she's playing on the left and she's actually better on the left than she is on the right she's just quality just her decision making and stuff like that and that has a knock on effect if you lose a player like that it's you're not just losing a full back you're losing the effect she has on everybody around her so that's like <laughs> that's a big loss and that's including Mary Earp so she's still quality but when you're when you lose that pace at the back that covers in and around like it's a big it's a big thing hmm and then just finally on the United one, a uh, question in from listener Deirdre on Twitter at the Quigig Pod if anyone wants to send us in questions during the week. 
He wants to know your thoughts on the Skinner sign at the weekend. Is it really all that bad? So there, for anyone who didn't see it, there was a Skinner out sign in the crowd and that kind of follows reports that there had been some fans uh, in there kind of between Christmas and New Year games chanting about Skinner and not wanting him around. Karen, as a resident United supporter, is it that bad? Do fans just kind of players need to get used to this sort of crack? Um, yeah, I well, he's not going anywhere if you listen to his interview after he has full belief in what he's doing. And uh, it's, <clears throat> yeah, he's, I think he's saying with the resources that he had that he's doing a, a good job. Um, I don't know where, I suppose last season there was a point where United were involved in the title race and obviously fans had that expectation that that will continue but you had City dropping a lot more points than they were this year. You had Arsenal dropping points, you had Chelsea dropping points. It wasn't as much to do with United playing brilliantly as it was to do with um, the other teams faltering a little bit at certain stages throughout the year. Um, and it made it exciting. And obviously you do get these expectations then that will be similar. Um, but based on the signings or lack of, like Emma said, a world-class signing, um, I think this is the level that United are at. So if they're frustrated with something, I think it should be the transfers, uh, potentially. Um, That's not a Manchester United problem at all. No, never. Recruitment is perfect in every way. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, it's it's hard to say. You feel like at this point of the season, um, they should, they should be more cohesive and he should be getting more out of the players. So I do understand the frustration, but saying Skinner out, I don't know, like who, who do they want to replace him is, is the bigger thing. Then Yeah. It, it is a bit of a strange one, isn't it? Because, yeah. you know, obviously they were, they did excellent last season. For me, they probably did. They were doing more than they should have. Like, yeah. and if City, had played well, a hand dropped silly points. I mean, it always sh- City should be up there, no matter what. So, well, I think we're seeing that this season. <laughs> I think this is the realism of of the league. What we're seeing now, first, second, third, and then United fourth. United are a fourth team team unless they make huge signings. I think JC is a very good signing, and I really like her. And I've said it before, I really like her on the right hand side. For me, she's not a number nine. Um, I really like Lucia Garcia. She's a, she's she's a great player. I love her to, to bits, but for me, is a very good player to come off the bench. So we're talking about players, you know, that aren't the answer. Like yeah. you needed to to get, and and I know Riviera is good. She's young. She is good, but again, for me, not the answer. Like she gets caught out of position a, a lot. Like she's she needs more experience. Um, but you've got to, you've got to bring in if if you sell Russo okay or Russo goes, you have to bring in a top top class number nine, top class number nine, yeah. top class number nine. Top and Jason class. was never the answer coming from Barcelona. No. Number one, she wasn't getting her game, and number two, when she was playing nine, she wasn't producing, so it wasn't going to be her. I think goal scorer, top class centre mid, box to box centre mid. Um, mm. it's definitely dear Mark Skinner Karen is sending her wish list in if you could please provide by as Emma Byrne has qualified <laughs> next week and, next week <laughs> <laughs> um, moving along because we could probably talk about United and Chelsea for most of this podcast to be honest but there were other games at the weekend two interesting fixtures to kind of go side by side just by some of the stuff that you guys have said already in the podcast so Arsenal 2 Everton 1 and then West Ham losing 4-3 to Tottenham um, I'm pu- putting those two together because Emma you said about you think that West Ham potentially could be similar level to Everton if they get their act together with the like current signings and we've been quite we've praised Everton quite a bit this season obviously Irish contingent's doing very well in there um, they've got some good results they've kind of maybe found a consistency of form we haven't seen too much from them before but just your, you can choose between either two, which one you want to start with. But just your thoughts, please. <laughs> West Ham's first. West Ham, Tottenham. West Ham, Tottenham. Yeah. <laughs> Go for it. Nice um, little seven goal thriller. Yeah, I mean, what a game. What a game. 
Um, I thought West Ham were slightly better, to be quite honest. Um, I, I'm enjoying watching Tottenham develop, though, and uh, watching this coach come I in. And he's a great crack. Spurs, I think Spurs are a great crack. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's you can see that they've got the confidence to get forward. Like they have changed yeah. their mentality a little bit, um, and I think they are going to get a little bit better. But realistically. That's the team. That's the squad. Like, it's not going to... I don't think they're going to surprise us too much. Whereas I think West Ham, with these players that have come in, I think they will just continue to improve. And I think they're going to finish the season really, really strong. And actually, maybe we'll be talking about them going, wow, if they had that team at the beginning, where would Man United be (laughs) at the table? (laughs) Who knows? But yeah, I mean, on paper... They've got a great team. They've a good goalkeeper. For me, you have to have a very good goalkeeper, experienced goalkeeper. And a lot of the teams don't have that in the WSL. And I think Mackenzie Arnold is one of those. Um, Suzoko, if if she can stay on the pitch, I think is a very good defender. <laughs> like if you can just get her disciplined, um, which I think Rianne Skinner can. Um, and then you've got, we talked about Rory, absolutely quality player she's she's so strong and Shimizu great technically Ueki like there's loads of players in there that are are world class so they should be up there so actually there's a little bit of pressure on Rianne Skinner now they've spent a lot of money and they've pushed players out the door and they've brought new players in like they're big statements um, obviously not not that much pressure because let's be honest, she's just come in. So I'm sure they'll give her a little bit of time with this new team. But we're going to be talking about West Ham in the, the higher half of the table for sure. Next season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Karen, you said you enjoy watching Spurs. Um, I mean, we have seen this team be very Spursy over the seasons <laughs> where like we've had great starts and then they've just totally faltered or else it's gone the other way around. And it's just hard to know where they stand a lot of the time. Yeah, but this is different because they, they're creating an identity. It's a bit mad, like when they try to do it against the likes of Man City, it's absolute kamikaze stuff. But, you know, the aim of the game is score more goals than your opposition. They manage that. Um, and like Villaham has said that, you know, he wants to grow the game and that means entertaining the crowds and they're doing that. Um, if I was a supporter, I think I'd be more stressed about it. But as a neutral, it's, it's very enjoyable. To well, I looked at him after the game saying that he really enjoyed it. And I was yeah. like, how as a manager did you enjoy that? Would you not be stressed to high heaven? So I suppose maybe that's a good sign of the mentality that he's bringing to the club as well in terms of, you know, enjoy your football as you say, kind of kamikaze style football, but also some good results. Like I'd say they would have been very, very happy walking away from West Ham with that win. Yeah, absolutely. It's a very good result. You know, it's keeping them in touching distance of um, United and, and Liverpool. So um, it's a great result for them. And, you know, they've got really good players. Like the top three are good. Thomas is playing really well. He, she, he, she was a good signing. England, obviously, after coming back from injury, um, was a little bit quiet, but you know, uh, she's always going to be a, a mainstay in that squad. And then having Clinton for the rest of the year, she's another top top quality player. So, um, I think they'll continue to score goals. So maybe at some point he'll address the the leaky back, but <laughs> I hope not because it just makes for entertainment. Long may we watch it as it continues. One of the other big scoring games at the weekend uh, was Brighton and Bristol, two teams that are kind of in that same area of relegation where he's Bristol, obviously bottom on goal difference at the moment on five points. Talked a little bit obviously about Sterling already in the team of the week because she had a really, really good game getting that 95th minute winner, which is uh, very important for Brighton in the context of these games. And I'm still very much at the feeling that Bristol are the team that are going to go down this season. Yeah, I mean, it was it was this game. I was putting all my eggs on this game. I was like, whoever wins this game is staying up. <laughs> That's the way I was looking at it. And it was, I think it was that important. I think I think I might have scared the girls a little bit as I was driving away from the the, the training ground. I was like, don't forget, this game is, is you either stay up or you go down with this result. And they were like, this defines your whole future. 
yeah, this defines your whole career on, on Sunday. <laughs> um, but it it felt like one of those games. I was at, I was at the game, and it felt like you know that they were desperate to to get a result, Brighton and Bristol, and it was a little bit scrappy at times. I think because of that, but um. What a win for for Brighton! So important, huge. I think it's a massive three points, and that's the game I was uh, focusing on this weekend because it is literally at this stage trying to scrap together and get points to stay up. And um, and yeah, this was the game for me that was very important. And was there something first... in particular that Brighton did that like got them over that line in a way that Bristol couldn't, or was it literally just pure? like complete trying 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 and just being the one to kind of knock down the wall eventually no I mean Bright, Brighton did look the better team to me they had possession um, a lot more possession they were getting forward a lot more and Bristol were defending and they were doing they were doing that quite well but then the decision making from Brighton in the final third was like oh, like for me it was like wow you're just gifting Bristol because they were enjoying the possession and then making horrible decisions and it's like okay and then Bristol looked quite dangerous when they got forward they have a, a Scottish player up there um, her name's Harrison and she she looks quite dangerous when she gets on the ball so I was like this could be just this could go either way right until the 95th minute I was like this could go either way I was like, Brighton look like the better team, but Bristol look dangerous when they get when they get into those areas, which wasn't en- wasn't enough. Um, but yeah, to be honest, I thought Brighton did deserve to win. I thought they were the better team, but it could have went either way. And you know, Bristol. Yeah, because if you look at the goals Bristol conceded, I think they'll be disappointed. Like the first one, they caused their own problems. Slow to react when they were playing out, you know, just played right into Brighton's yes, hands. Yes. See, this is what I don't really get with them because yeah. they can be quick going forward. And in a game like this, I want to be playing in the opposition half as much as possible. Yeah. So, and you know, every team that Bristol play press high against them. <laughs> like, like they know they're going to try and play out. There are times where you have to be like, right, I just want to win this game. I just want you to to pop that in to to midfield and then support and get higher up the pitch. We need to get Harrison. We need to get Thestrup on the ball. But like that, they were just trying to play again. I was like, mm, just get the result. It, it doesn't really matter if it's ugly today. We can go again next week, you know. But um, yeah, it's, it's it's difficult, and and I think you can see it. Like the WSL for me is the best league in the world. And I think it's the most difficult. And coming up, I think there's a big gap from WSL 2 to WSL 1. And I think every team's going to struggle a little bit. Although I have been hearing a lot of stuff about WSL 2 teams making these sign-ins and building their team. So I actually think it's going to be a different story next season about who goes up. I think they're I definitely think some of the teams that are competing at the top of it are like really trying. You look at the signings that you're making and I'm like, hmm, that's an interesting signing for a championship side. But I think it's with a view of we want to progress. And it's why I slightly hope with the new system that's coming in for managing the two that maybe it's more than just one team that goes up so that teams are actually getting more than like one season to prove their worth. Because again, you get the bump from going up, you get like the increase people coming to games you get televised games all those different things P- players become more recognizable it's more of a brand it's very hard to build off just one season in the WSL whereas if there's two teams at least there's that option of kind of like for a little while I know it's I don't know if it'll actually happen but I think it would I think it would help things a bit and um, we are quickly running out of time so we also had Man City 5 Liverpool 1 Liverpool giving up that one goal lead very unfortunately um, Gemma Bonner on goal and then Bunny Shaw doing what Bunny Shaw does I mean is there much more that we can say about her after mentioning her in our team of the week yeah we could keep talking about her all day but <laughs> we, we I think it would just be us being like isn't she great we love watching her it's great um, she, she's I just City in general I, I just like watching them I love watching them I think they're a great team and I think she's absolutely lapping up those those balls coming in because they do have the best wingers in the country 
and they do have one of the best centre forwards. So it's just it's just they're just a really nice team to watch, and they look like they know what they're doing. Um, everyone can play. There's no everyone's so good on the ball from keeper right up to bunny. Sometimes she plays a little bit too much. The keeper. <laughs> Uh, Kiara, Kitty. Um, but yeah, great team, really nice to watch. But he's changing it a little bit again. Uh, makes me nervous when it comes to this time of the season and the team changes a little bit because it's really difficult for someone like, for example, Kasparai. He likes Kasparai, he's going to start Kasparai's right back. Okay. But then you've got Esme Morgan who's sitting on the bench who won't be happy about sitting on the bench. That always causes a little bit, you know, whoever, if you're, you're usually playing and you're sat on the bench, obviously there's going to be a little bit of an atmosphere. But then injuries, so you have to depend on those players. And it's all about how you manage those players. I mean, Emma Hayes is the perfect example. She does a great job on how she does that. Um. I just hope that that at City that that's been done well because that's exactly what they need now and that's exactly what could be their downfall <laughs> towards the end of the season, like how the team is managed and how the team's going to change and can they get the best out of the players. So I think it's going to be an awesome end to the season. Very exciting. Yeah, no, it definitely is going to be an exciting one. Well, we hope so anyways. We're like, we're halfway through. That was the halfway point of the season. Um, Match day 12 coming up on the 27th of this weekend. We have Brighton facing Chelsea, United at home to Aston Villa, Everton at home to Leicester, City away to Tottenham, Bristol at home to West Ham, and then Liverpool at home to Arsenal, which should be interesting considering how those games that sometimes go could be a little bit of a bogey one. And then in terms of the table, Chelsea are top. They're ahead by three points on 28. City and Arsenal tied on 25 behind them. And then at the bottom, you have Bristol and West Ham both on five and their nearest is Leicester on 10. So as we've seen, because there are so few fixtures, things can change very, very quickly. Um, and that's why we're here to guide you through it and give all our thoughts and feelings and opinions and our thoughts on opening doors for people because we're we're polite <laughs> like that. Uh, Emma and Karen, thank you very, very much for joining me as always. The Koi Gig Pod on Off The Ball is sponsored by Cabri, official snack partner to the Republic of Ireland women's national team. If you want to get in contact with us and get featured on the podcast, please do tweet us at the Koi Gig Pod. Um, we're always monitoring that account. You can send us messages we're always looking for people uh for certain opinions on things and we have our team of the week and all that sort of stuff up there as well so if you want to give your opinions on specific stuff like that that is the place i say we're always on it i'm always on it and then i sometimes bring other people in on it because i like being in control of things and but for this week that is all from us and we will see you again next week with all the usual crack and analysis thank you very much for listening the Koi Gig Pod on Off the Ball in association with Cadbury, official snack partner of the Republic of Ireland women's national team. Katie McCabe, a huge, huge goal. I'm very proud of the team's performance. We're going to go out there to beat them. We're going to try and beat them. 